Let me ask you a question. What do soundbars, speakers, portable speakers, and home audio systems have in common? If your answer is that you can make your wired house audio system, old speakers, and old soundbars into home pods, then you'd be right. Well, kind of. In today's video, we're covering how to stream music to wired speakers, even if the speakers are old, even if the sound system is old, and basically enjoy the high-tech audio system without the price tag. We are reviewing Belkin's Soundform Connect. No, this is not a sponsored video. I was curious how this works and my hobby is video editing, so here we are. Let's get started. Belkin is not sponsoring this video, but guess who is? Exter, shop the smarter wallet. Use the code Ruslan for up to a lot of percent off. Transform your shopping experience and your life with a better wallet. Full review up top, check it out. So the box is pretty standard for Belkin. It's almost like Apple's packaging. The quality is high up there. Yeah, at the top, we just have a little plastic thingy going on here. Nothing a sharp spudger can't solve. I will say that Belkin's packaging is all always high quality. So the adapter itself is tiny. It's very small. And as promised, we have our three and a half millimeter and optical input. Here is where the USB-C power goes in. Here you can manually paperclip reset it. Other than that, it's very simple. It's very lightweight. Here we have our HomeKit setup code. Please don't break into my stuff. Here we have our serial number. Please don't steal my warranty. We have our input rating. And overall, this is a very small, compact, adapter. I was really surprised. I was expecting something heavier. Two or three matchboxes. Regulatory information. Definitely going to read this. Instructions. Basically set up instructions. How you shouldn't connect two connections at once. I wonder what happens if you do that. Now you can either use near field communication. So tapping your iPhone on the adapter to connect it, the accessory, and setting it up with HomeKit. And nice of them to actually include, they included a USB-C adapter too. So this is a pretty basic, okay, I was gonna say, I don't know why this includes HomeKit power brick, as well as a USB-A to USB-C cable. We'll be testing the three and a half millimeter jack, as well as the optical audio. So my house came with these speakers up top behind the television, as well as these speakers. I put the TV here, here's the sound box. So first we're going to test out this ancient AVR245 by Harman Kardon. This has optical, but it has nothing else. So I'm setting up for the video now, and I'm wishing that for the price of this thing, it actually included at least a short optical cable because now I'm going to have to disconnect the television and there's going to be like a slightly unsightly long, too long of a optical cable on this. So I'm kind of wishing that this included a short optical cable. You can take the, you can take the short optical cable, you can connect it on your existing system like so and call it a day. Now you have to go either buy a separate optical cable. So setting this up is as easy as Plugging it in, connect the Uzbase. For whatever reason, the connections are on opposite sides. Power is on the front, and then the audio connection is in the back. Which could be better? Since we're using the iPhone to film, we'll set this up manually, but we can also bring the iPhone up close. We just go to add accessory, more options and then select sound form connect. Then we just enter the HomeKit code provided on the back, select continue, and it'll say connecting to audio receiver. We select the location, sound form connect. We see it appears in the HomeKit application. We see an option here called sound form connect. really interesting is that normally I can't actually control the volume going to the sound receiver using anything other than the remote control because my TV happens to support AirPlay 2 but looks like on this I can so this is a really cool additional feature the sound box has a few inputs and I can just pick the correct input now that we've turned down the volume let's select additional home pods and check how it works so right now we're streaming to the kitchen. Stand between the kitchen and the sound form. 
compare the sound. Okay, I'm ready to call this a great success. Let's see how it resumes. Perfectly in sync, my friends. Now let's see how this works with an old soundbar, converting not optical, but using three and a half millimeter audio. Here we have my extraordinarily scientific setup. First we're going to set it up Vizio. Let's see, input aux, there we go. Sound form connect, connected to the aux input. Using a three and a half millimeter cable on this old soundbar. Ancient soundbar does not have capabilities to airplay whatsoever. Now let's check how well this synchronizes. This can happen with normal HomePods too. This has happened to me before on regular AirPlay too. I'm going to give this adapter the benefit of the doubt and see if this happens again. Sorry for the crazy cabling mess. This is a to-do furniture item for the bedroom TV. As shown, you might wanna double check if this works with your soundbar because my best guess is that with these soundbars, there might be some sort of delay associated, you know, just with the electronics and stuff. The Belkin was working great with regular optical. Your luck may vary with different kinds of soundbars. This is one of my absolute favorite toys in the world. It's a Bose mini portable speaker. It's louder than a HomePod mini, I'll be so bold as to say. After this failed experiment with the sound system, I'm reattempting this with three and a half millimeter aux to see if it's the circuitry causing the delay in the sound system before completely writing this off on three and a half millimeter or whether it's something fishy at play. Bose, HomePod, HomePod, Bose. The audio quality is more than sublime, so I take back what I was saying earlier. The three and a half millimeter was just a limitation of the sound bar. This is laying around for me most of the time. Bose like really designed this really well. I know it's a little off topic for the video, but I think this is a mounting contact so you can actually put this incorporated into a sound system. But anyways, you can leave this charging, you can leave it connected to this Belkin. Still not a fan of how the power and the audio are on different sides. And I forgot to say, it might be even better to update the firmware on this to make sure it's the latest firmware. And maybe we could have gotten it working with a sound bar over there. Big fan of the sound quality. Bose plus Belkin equals happiness. I won't focus on this too much because you already get the picture. Have old speakers laying around, make them into home pods as well. Overall, AirPlay 2 was my favorite feature. The Apple ecosystem integration worked wonderfully. You can play music at the same time everywhere. You can also buy multiple adapters and use them all like HomePods to play music too. And if you ask yourself the question, why buy this for 100 bucks when I can buy a HomePod mini for $100, the answer would be converting existing home audio systems or adding AirPlay 2 to existing expensive soundbars. To be realistic, this probably isn't worth it at all for existing old PC speakers or anything minuscule laying around. The only downside is definitely the price. And as we said before, they could have at least included short optical and headphone cables. That's all for today. I sincerely thank everyone for tuning in. Let me know if you bought one of these and tried it and your thoughts below in the comments. Thanks for watching and have a great day as always.